Chris, let's start here. Your team leads the nation in scoring margin despite the fact that you've played a schedule which has already included Cincinnati, Villanova, North Carolina. How much, if at all, has this dominance, not just the record, but the dominance, pleasantly surprised you and your staff? I tell you, Rick, great to be with you, by the way, Rick. I, I, you know, I don't think you ever go into a season or a game, for that matter, and anticipate having, you know, a situation where you, you pull away at the end like we have in a couple games or even, you know, the, 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 the game we played against Villanova where it was a pretty complete from beginning to end. You know, there have been some factors that have led into that for sure with, uh, you know, uh, in, in different games. But bottom line is our, our guys really perform well in, in some of those higher profile games. You allowed just 49 to an explosive North Carolina team. You scored 106 against the Penn State team, which prides itself on defense. With the, which of those two accomplishments from a coaching perspective is more impressive? I'll tell you, I think Penn State's really good, Rick. And, and obviously, we've got great respect for North Carolina. It's not the same North Carolina team that it's been in, in terms of scoring the ball. And on top of that, uh, they lost Baycott, their second-best player there, in the first seven minutes. So I would probably point to the Penn State game uh, just because of the respect we have for them. And that game was an eight-, eight or nine-point game, you know, really uh, through th midway through the second half. So uh, th there's a lot I think we can point to and say, hey, there's been some really positive moments. But um, uh, also I know, we, you know we've got a lot to continue to improve on. Came across a cool nugget statistical anomaly this morning. Your team has already become one of four in college basketball history to post two wins in one season over top 10 teams and to win both those games by at least 25 points. Now, the great news here, Chris, is that the other three teams all went on to win the national championship. I, I guess that puts some extra pressure on you guys. Now, in all seriousness, <laughs> what's the key to sustaining this level of play? Well, I think we got our, our young guys have to continue to improve. You know, I think, um, you know, last year, as you remember, Rick, we, we had a great start. We were 12 and one. Um, and then I think when you, we got into the rough and tumble Big Ten and I think everybody realized our league was the deepest of any conference last year in the country. When we got in the league, we, we really struggled, particularly early uh, in January. So I think the challenge is to stay in the moment. At this time of the year, no one really knows, uh, you know, in reality how good anybody is. I think we're all still trying to figure out um, that. But I, I think the key is stay in the moment, stay consistent with our approach of improvement, holding each other accountable, staying committed to the team. Um, I think if we do that, good things will happen. There, there's... You know, there's a lot of distractions that can happen for, for all of us, and our, our focus needs to be on continuing to grow and get better and improve. And I think we've done that. You know, our first, our first game versus Cincinnati, we didn't score for the first nine minutes of the game. We didn't score a point, eight, eight or nine minutes. Um, so we know there's, there's, uh, you know there's ebbs and flows in every season and every game, and we've, we've got to just focus on improving. Now, Chris, I know a lot of teams at this point in the season get to play a lot of guys, but your team has taken it to a whole new level. I believe it is 10 players averaging at least 11 minutes in seven games or more. How does that depth and that balance allow you to shuffle and maybe change your lineups more than other coaches are able to do so? Well, I'm hoping we can continue to build on that. You know, I, we've, we've, it's hard to play more than 10 guys in college basketball today. Some of our our wins have allowed us to play more guys. Uh, and then we've also played, you know, a nine-man rotation. We played nine guys against North Carolina uh, the other night. We've stayed pretty consistent between an eight- to ten-man rotation. I, I would love to uh, lengthen that a little bit if we could, particularly early in the season, because you know throughout the course of the season uh, there might be an illness or an injury or a sprained ankle where guys are going to need to be ready. Um, but, but I, I, would, I would love to keep that between 8, 9, or 10. Beyond that, it's hard to, it's hard to play uh, a rotation too much bigger than that. 
Much has been made of Caleb's physical transformation. There was a set of plays against Penn State this past weekend, which really opened my eyes. He knocked down a three, a couple of possessions later, great fake, drove to the bucket, and just one possession later on defense, all the way back to block a Penn State shot. How has that transformation of Caleb Wesson physically kind of changed his skill set? You're speaking like a coach because I, I noticed that as well. <laughs> That's... That was a segment that I noticed as well as, as a contrast, right, to uh, maybe the multiple effort plays that he wasn't uh, uh, as um, able to make in, in years past. And uh, it was a tremendous sequence. Uh, his play has been the best uh, that I've ever seen um, him play, and I've said that at the beginning. Now, I don't know if his you know, numbers are going to make a dramatic increase from years past. What I do know is that everybody who watches college basketball knows that he's uh, a much better player uh, on both ends. What he's got to do is continue to stay committed to his routine of uh, staying fit and staying in the best shape he can. Sometimes it's hard in season, Rick, and uh, he's got to stay really committed to that. Uh, but he's just... He's played, like I said the other day, he's played like who he is, and that is one of the best players uh, in the Big Ten and in the country and, and one of the hardest matchups, too. Listen, I've seen the football training table. If the basketball training table is anything like that, he has the opportunity to stay pretty healthy and eat some pretty good food at the same time. It's high level. Yeah. It, our nutrition, I will say that being here uh, into our third year, Rick, it's, it's really high level what we provide our athletes in terms of food and nutrition. Uh, we've had guys transfer in from other power conferences, high-level power conferences, and they do talk about uh, the quality of nutrition and how the availability and the quality of food that's provided for our guys. So it's, it's outstanding. Chris, let me get you out of here on this one. You have a full eight days between that Penn State win and your next game against Minnesota this coming Sunday. I know first and foremost it allows you to get all the Christmas shopping done that you love to do this time of the year. But in honesty, <laughs> would you like to get back at it riding this wave of momentum or is now a good time for a little bit of an extended break? You know, I see both sides of it, to be honest with you. I think that the reality is, is we're a little bit banged up as teams are. The, the, the schedule last week was somewhat of a hectic one with a Wednesday night and Saturday noon tip. Uh, so probably the rest and being focused in on finals week is important. I will say this, the general rule for me, if you're playing well, you'd like to play almost every day. Um, you can't do that, but the reality is when you're playing well, you want them to keep coming in pretty rapid fire. Um, we're going to have a little bit of a break. We're going to play a really good team in a fantastic environment in Minnesota on Sunday. Um, so we need to have a good week in preparing for that. Always good to catch up with Chris Holtman, coach of the now number three team in the country, the Ohio State Buckeyes. Chris, appreciate the time. Best of luck. Great seeing you, Rick. Thank you. Happy holidays.